In July 2008, an unidentified hairless creature washed ashore near the town of Montauk, New York. Dubbed the Montauk Monster by the press, first a discussion centered on whether the creature was an elaborate hoax. However, talk soon shifted to whether this creature could have been from the mysterious Plum Island. At the time, it was the home to the Animal Disease Center just two miles from the American mainland. The center's administration had vigorously denied any involvement, yet the facility on the island had been accused of a string of unethical practices. From biological weapons testing to warp genetic practices, but if the monster wasn't a product of Plum Island experiments, what is it that they actually did? Plum Island was owned by a succession of families from 1659 until 1890 when it was given over for military use. The U.S. Army Chemical Corps began work on a series of laboratories in 1952 before ownership was transferred to the Department of Agriculture under advisement from one Eric Traub. Traub was a leading scientific light in Nazi Germany during World War II and had been suspected of working on the Axis Biological Warfare Program. Soon after it opened in 1954, Plum Island began studies into foot and mouth disease. This was the same disease Traub was suspected to have worked to weaponize during the war. The official purpose of the facility was to research effective preventative measures against agricultural diseases. Given the devastating effect it would have on the economy, this isn't all that strange. That was until 2001, when one of the worst outbreaks of foot and mouth in the UK cost the British economy over five and a half billion dollars. However, local people had been increasingly concerned with Plum Island's other, less publicized activities. For decades, authorities denied reports that they had participated in biological warfare programs. This is despite allegations from Cuba that their agriculture had been infected by the US with the deadly Newcastle virus. The same Newcastle virus which Eric Traub, advisor to Plum Island, had worked on during the war. Documents uncovered by Newsweek magazine in 1993 appeared to confirm the suspicions of a history of bioweapons research. Officially, these programs were struck from the books in 1969 by President Richard Nixon. However, locals such as Randy Sykes were not convinced. The local area appeared to suffer from regular disease outbreaks. In 1978, Lyme disease appeared a mere 13 miles away from the facility and was quickly blamed by the sufferers. In 1999, the West Nile virus, another of Dr. Traub's areas of speciality, was found for the first time in the United States. Interestingly, the first record human cases in the U.S. are cited on being found in Queens, New York, approximately 90 miles from Plum Island. The USDA has dismissed both cases as merely coincidence and issued no explanation for West Nile virus' sudden appearance. Meanwhile, theorists such as Jesse Ventura allege that at best the powers that be are negligent and that the outbreaks have been covered up accidents. At worst, the facility had intentionally released pathogens into the surrounding areas, perhaps to monitor the effectiveness and virality of their programs. If the latter was the case, how bad was the security on Plum Island? and how much at risk was the general public? In 2002, 76 maintenance staff members went on strike after talks broke down over pay rises and jobs going to the private sector. As a consequence, emergency temps were drafted, yet problems were still occurring. Water pressure dropped across the island, disabling contamination and necropsy rooms. And the union of the striking workers accused authorities of failing to properly screen replacements. In 2003, a whistleblower named James A. McCoy accused the center of permitting security breaches and inappropriate asbestos cleaning. Perhaps most damning of all was author Kenneth King had claimed he had evidence of workers using duct tape to seal testing laboratories. However, for those seeking answers about Plum Island's darker experiments, time has all but run out. The Department of Homeland Security current owners closed the facility in 2005 
and moved its inner workings to a new facility located all too close to home for me. The new facility was constructed and is still in use in Manhattan, Kansas today. As far as Plum Island is concerned, its secrets were probably buried deep within governmental archives. So where does that leave the Montauk monster in all this? Officially, the monster had been identified as a decomposing raccoon, so apparently case closed. But possibly not. In 2010, a dead human body was found on Plum Island itself. The body was described as being tall and well-built, with elongated fingers and injuries consistent with brain surgery. This gruesome discovery led to even more allegations that Plum Island wasn't just experimenting on animals, but had moved on to humans as well. And as of yet, there's been no official explanation, as if there would be. As far as the new facility being operated in Manhattan, Kansas, this for one wasn't something the people who lived in the state were really told. At least it doesn't seem to be common knowledge. Considering I'm a resident myself, I actually wasn't even aware that something like that existed only a few hours from where I live, which is crazy in and of itself. But this poses another question to me. How does having a bioweapons slash disease research lab so close to the food production breadbasket make any sense? All it would take would be for one slip up and something horrible could overtake the food supply and thus spread to the rest of the country. As far as I'm aware, that hasn't happened. Yet. So what do you think? Was Plum Island conducting horrific animal and or human experiments? Were diseases and viruses being tested on the population? And what do you think of the new lab being located right in the breadbasket of Middle America? Make sure to let me know down in the comments below. And please give this video a like and subscribe with the bell so that you never miss a new upload. This has been Cody with Mystery Archives. Thank you so much for watching and have yourself a wonderful day.